Very good evening. A warm welcome from Asian College of Teachers. What is the role of a teacher? Well, the usual answer would be to teach. But if we go a little bit further and try to understand the role of a teacher, is it that a teacher only teaches? We have in history excellent examples of teachers emerging as leaders. I remember uh, I was listening to the talk of Dr. Kalam in 1979, a profound teacher, how he controlled the failure of the satellite and he emerged as a leader. Essentially, what we find in today's world is that not all the teachers always teaches throughout his or her career, but a teacher emerges to be a leader and as well as controlling the entire administration of his or her institute. To talk about similar kind of a topic, we have a teacher leader or a teacher manager today joining with us. We have uh, Damayanti Bhattacharya, uh, currently principal of Jasuddin ML School. She is joining with us directly from Mumbai. Uh, prior to this, she has spent around 20 years at the Cathedral and John Connon School, uh, including various roles as a headmistress. She has got her MA in English from the University of Calcutta. She is an ardent fan of classical contemporary music and she enjoys into animal welfare. Her passion is obviously to create ecosystem in education institutions where young minds are nurtured and stimulated to do excel. She is an educator with 30 years of experience. Her passion is education in institutes and creating and helping different entrepreneurship development. Welcome, uh, Ms. Dhamanthi Bhattacharya. Welcome to our show. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so uh, we have got us, uh, Mrs. Damanti joining directly from Mumbai. And those who are joining in late to this discussion and topic would be how a teacher can migrate or there is a transition from a teacher to an administrator. Ma'am, uh, thank you very much for taking your time today. My first question would be that uh, let us start essentially as a teacher. So what according to you, because there has been a huge span that you have gone forward in different schools working uh, in different profiles. So what are the essential elements that you consider to be a successful teacher? So uh, first and foremost, uh, to define the word success, it means different things to different people. But uh, I'm going to talk from my own experiences today. Uh, according to me, first and foremost, the teacher is good to bring out the best in the pupil, whether it is uh, in academics or whether it is shaping the personality, thoughts, all these things. It is a successful teacher should be able to bring out the best in a child. Uh, a successful teacher will always see to it that his pupil, pupil betters his achievements and take pride in it. If I have uh, you know, if I have gone to, uh, uh, you know, my level is X, and if my child, if my student is X plus or X plus plus, I should be happy. And I, you know, when I know, and I know that I've done a good job as a teacher, right? And a successful teacher is who brings out not only the best in, in academics, but uh, uh, but also in, you know, uh, helps the child to find a place, a spot in the sun for himself. You know, his own identity get his own identity and uh, makes him a thinker, all right? Uh, a good teacher and a successful teacher will have to necessarily, I feel, be a good communicator. Uh, we'll also have to be a very good listener because it's very important to listen to the children. When they talk, you have to listen to what they're saying, not just hear what they're saying, but to listen to what they're saying, all right? Uh, a successful teacher must have, must make classes engaging, interesting this is the very mundane aspect i feel uh, and stimulating it it should be classes to be should be interesting should be stimulating so that the children uh, you know the children are able to carry back or carry forward uh, whatever you have taught them in life so uh, a teacher must be empathetic and a successful teacher will always uh, teach and more importantly, learn. 
all the time. A successful teacher has to be constantly on their learning mode because there is so much happening in the world today in the field of education. If you don't learn, if you don't find innovative ways to teach, see, the curriculum uh, remains the same. Um, I mean, mathematics, conceptually, or you know, English grammar, or whatever, history, it cannot change. Those things cannot change. What has to change, what has to change is the teaching system. So a successful teacher will always look to make lessons interesting, and a successful teacher will look to ways to, to capture hold the attention of the child in class. All right. Uh, but having said that, uh, there are several uh, teachers that we meet in our lives. So uh, in the life of a child, there are several teachers. So the role of the teacher is also the parent also is a teacher, friends, life experiences, all these shape a child's life and personality. So success would depend yeah. on that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. So, uh, like, if we if we can summarize, those are very important points. I think the listeners who are listening or those who are, uh, you know, the new teachers. First one is uh, to be empathetic. Second one, as a teacher, it should not be that I know everything. It should be like a yes. constant process of learning. And I liked what you told, ma'am, that create a spot in the sun. That's yes. wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so that is how. So, uh, like, uh, as you have told that if uh, if these are the essential and most importantly to bring out the best out of the uh, child, like whatever the potentials are. So we have seen uh, numerous examples when the children, when the teachers have actually uh, got hold of a child or a student who is not going so good, but eventually has brought out what was intrinsically the best. And I think that is the eye of a teacher. So, uh, like, uh, if you see, uh, ma'am, that if, the, if the, these are the things which are the essential qualities, because you are already working as a principal, plus yeah. you have got uh, experience. So, do you think that there are signs of maturity which a person or an administrator or a principal can see? So, uh, my question to you would be that what are the signs of maturity, uh, number one, that uh, uh, that a teacher shows in order to move from teaching to a better or a higher role, which can be administration. Second, do you think in today's world, like it is also the responsibility of his or her uh, senior to have that kind of an eye to spot out the difference that now you're becoming a matured uh, enough to handle uh, something more challenging than teaching? Yes. So uh, the thing is that uh, I'm glad you asked me that question because uh, I can speak about my own journey. So I can tell you that uh, it's um, it's something that you feel uh, well when you are a teacher, when you are doing when you're and I've been uh, an act into active teaching for many years. In fact, I'm still teaching. Uh, so it is it is one is it's a feeling that you're ready to move your re own readiness in your right. head, in your heart, because what is essentially happening is that you are moving out from that classroom to a bigger arena. All right. right. Where you are handling not only a class of, say, 40, 50 or 60, you are handling your entire staff that the, all the communities that are that that are there for your students, your parents. So if you have like I have 1500 uh, children in my school, so I'm easily handling 3,000 parents, you know. So parents, children, teachers, the other staff, the admin. So that is a huge range that you are. So that readiness is very, very important. All right. Uh, secondly, I feel that uh, um, a teacher who has good uh, problem-solving skills and conflict-resolving skills uh, you know, can think of moving. If you are the kind of person who is not able to manage even things within your own classroom or your own colleagues, you're con confronting them. See, uh, problems will always be there. But what does a leader do? A leader, a leader's job is to solve those problems. I cannot go to the table and say that, look, this is my problem. All right. I have I have to solve. It is the onus is on me. So if you have good problem solving skills, I think it's a very huge it's a huge plus. Right. And then um, you must the, the you know, the most important thing is, uh, like, as I said earlier, that human resource using that human resource, the ability to use that human resource, that huge resource that you have 
uh, whether it's your teachers, whether it is your children, whether it is your parent body, uh, whatever it may be, the ability to manage that human resource. Yes, that is very, very important. Right. Besides this, you need to be, of course, a very good communicator. And when I say communicator, it is I'm not I have to remember that I'm not just communicating to a class of 30 or 40. I am communicating with the board. I am communicating with my parents. I'm communicating with my teachers. I'm communicating with different people at different levels. So my thought has to be 100% clear. There has to be clarity of thought. There has to be clarity of expression. All right. So communication is very clear. And if you want to be seen as a transparent leader, yes, in that, uh, in that, when you are conveying something, that has to be conveyed in a and in a absolutely clear manner, so that there is no ambiguity or any scope for any doubt. So, um, uh, planning, thinking, uh, innovation, uh, delegation. Uh, somebody who is somebody I have very often seen teachers who get caught up in their own way up. Oh, I have done this. This is my PPT. I will not share this with no. When you are an administrator or when you're a principal, you have to get out of that mode, that that state of mind. You have to be that person who's willing to share. All right, and you have to have an eye for detail. When you do something, you need to think. You need you need to do any plan, any small plan, be it a, a trip to a, a field trip, or you know, be it planning a big event for the school. Eye for detail. What will the repercussions be? What will the impact be? Right. Uh, so you have, and most importantly, you have to have vision. Now, being a teacher, sometimes can you are very concerned. You're very caught up with your solving of your problems in the in in your every day in your classes. You know, no submissions, cheating, or whatever little issues that crop up every day. Somebody is not able doing work properly to your expert, whatever. So, but the thing is that you have to move out of that. You have to think bigger. You have to think that where, where is this child? Where is this? Even if a child is getting 40%, you have to think that, okay, maybe this is the ability of the child. So how can I place this child in a place where the child will become, um, you know, do well? And of course, you have to think, you have to have vision. You have to think of things ahead. Where will the institution head? How, where is my school going? All right. Uh, what are the kind of children? What am I what am I telling? What is the kind of message that I'm giving to my children? So that vision, that vision, where do I want my institution to be? That is of paramount, I feel. Right. So um, I, I think if I um, if I if I can understand you well, moving out from an individualistic approach to a holistic approach. Holistic approach, exactly, right. exactly. So uh, uh, I mean to say that uh, instead of uh, you know taking few, I, I think that this is an important point which the viewers should take a note because I have seen, uh, ma'am, that teachers do have a kind of a preference. I'm not saying that it is good or bad because we as human uh, human beings we all have preference. I think. Even God has a preference to make human beings as the best animal. <laughs> right. So in order to move out from the preference of yeah. one person who is doing good in order yes. to make him or yes. her best, you yes. we should approach that. Let us see the how the other people are doing a little bit lesser and how to make them best. Absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. so, so, so that is very yeah. important. I think that is a mindset. So no, actually what I'll tell you, it's not a mindset. What really happens is uh, when there are five children in class or ten children in class who who's following your every instruction, excelling in every test, you see, the then the teacher doesn't have to bother very much. There's no headache. There's no headache for. But the problem is with the strugglers. The problem is with the child who is getting a fifty percent or a forty percent. You have to work that much more hard. So for the ease, for the for the, it's very easy to handle the very good children, very conscientious. I won't I won't say good or bad because everybody's good. All right. Uh, but uh, the conscientious, the, the star student of the class, it's very easy to handle the star student because he is always conscientious. He will always do the work. The tough part of the teacher's job is to handle the middle, the middle rung. You know? Right. True. Oh, yes. Very so that's good. a challenge, which is very annoying sometimes. You know, from, in a big yeah, class. I got a, yeah. We got an interesting comment from Priyanka uh, yes. telling that during my teaching journey, I understood that. One thing that teaching is all about, given and give and take proportion, you are not just giving 
but taking a lot from children of course much more much more much much more children teach so, you much more right and my small question to you before we go to the next point is that uh, it is also essential like you are there possibly you have the vision to take up the right teacher who is matured enough showing the signs in order to move into a bigger role but it is not always true because if the teacher is not getting enough amount of scope from the senior then i think she will be burnt out uh, after a few years of just teaching so yes, i think yes. that 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 leadership is also an important part yes of course it is of course yeah, they must be the empowered thing, teachers must be empowered yes, it's important empowered. very important yeah, uh, yes. yeah. so um, like it obviously leads to the next question which uh, keeps in my in my mind that say so for example as a head teacher or as a senior teacher whatever the role uh, they are doing so do you think that administration is a direct path because this is true this will be important because the viewers who are the you know listening to us uh, the, those who are head teacher or in a senior role they would be willing to know from you that is administration the only path in which they can migrate and after getting empowered or do you think uh, what could be the other options yeah. so having being in an uh, in an administrative position let's say for the last 9 years now uh, one is uh you have to have that very strong and this i speak uh, from from experience it should not be a mechanical move that i'm going to get a better right. salary or i'm going to get better box or you know, whatever it is and that chair that more power whatever with that chair comes immense amount of responsibility so you have to think of that before you take it on all right it's really a back breaking job being the administrator is really a back breaking job because you are not just taking you are taking care of the e you know you are taking forward the ethos of the school look how big mm -hmm. that responsibility is like representing your country in a more you know in a smaller sense when mm -hmm. you are out to play a badminton a game or whatever in 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 the olympics or something it's a huge responsibility that you carry so as an you so first and foremost i would say to all those who are seeking uh you know who are thinking of moving out of teaching because teaching is burnout is very high in teaching it's a very very taxing job that yeah. we tell you people think that uh, you know oh what is there you know you have ten, so many holidays saturdays and days are holiday but let me tell you that in a classroom of 30 or 40 all right when there's so much noise and we are perennially chasing a curriculum uh, there are exams there are papers to be marked there are naughty children to be dealt with you know it's hot a country so combined everything combined together teacher burnout is very very high and yes they do look out for a change in career because of exhaustion all right uh, it is right. not uh, you know so a teacher but yes there are several things that a teacher can do simply because uh, a teacher without even knowing uh, acquires so many skills uh, when he is teaching all right so essentially we deal dealing with human beings so a teacher can easily look at becoming a career counselor because in your own little classrooms you are counseling your child you are counseling the the parents all right um, so you can easily look to become of course that would require a little bit of training a little you know you need to take a degree or or, or some science sort of a certification for it but you would do wonderfully because a teacher has to be a good listener all right so uh so you can easily become a, a a career counselor or a school counselor whatever uh, you wish to do uh also a teacher can be a very good life coach because and there are huge demands for life coaches in this day age and day because we're all looking for that direction so every teacher in his or her own classroom is a life coach you are training a child to lead his or her life all right so uh teachers make excellent candidates because they have good communication skills they make excellent candidates for writing jobs all right whether it's editing whether it's becoming writing in a blog whether it's writing a book or a magazine you can easily stem out into that all right a teacher can be a very good human resource specialist all right providing training to corporate employees So no, administration is not the only thing that a teacher can do. These this, these are a few that I have mentioned. There are many others that you can be a curriculum creator. You can be, you know, you can uh, so many things that you can do. 
uh, as if you don't want to stop tea, if you want to don't want to continue as a teacher. So doing being becoming an administrator is not, and they are all equally paying jobs. Let me tell you very quickly. But so becoming a, a administrator is not the only path for the teacher. There are okay. several things depending on what you want to do. There is several options open for, you, for the teacher. Thank you, thank you. I think that is uh, quite enlightening because now this, <laughs> the viewers can at least know that what are the uh, things that are, are there other than um, uh, being. And I have mentioned only three or four. There are several, several things yes, in the market. Right. 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 Now, I'm, like, I'm just telling you that now that we have uh, known from uh, uh, like the uh, virtues of becoming into administration. What are the essentials that you need to have as a teacher and why and what are the options that a teacher moves into administration? Now, having come at the middle of our session, when we are uh, considering that a teacher has moved into the session, just as a uh, few days back, I was passing by my schools uh, here and, you know, I got nostalgic. As you understand, school days, obviously, That's here fine. I used to and here there was a fuchka wala or something like that. And evidently, the... Uh, you know, faces of those teachers who are still alive, some of them have passed away, essentially came in very nearby to uh, my office. So what I found is that it is all because of love. Like still uh, at this age, when we are going back to the school, we cannot forget our school, but we might not remember our college days, to be very honest. Like it is the basic foundation, other from our uh, passing, going out from our home, what comes nearest is the school and they are like our mothers. So my question to you is that like being a teacher, like you being have been into teaching for so long, the, the, the attachment with the teacher along with the student, which is there in a classroom oriented teaching for a long session. Do you think that coming into administration, there is a curtailment, there is a loss in terms of the attachment and does it create a kind of a mental setback to the teachers that I cannot see my students and I cannot talk or even scold them? <laughs> no. Uh, so see, uh, it's like this. First and foremost, I'm very grateful that I have a certain amount of, I think, many principals. They have a certain amount of teaching uh, periods. Uh, we have to uh, teach. At least I'm teaching and I'm enjoying it. Um, in, in, so I am in class uh, dealing with their everyday issues and I'm so glad because I think that's what keeps me going. Uh, so the thing, uh, you know, when a teacher moves from teaching to an administrative course, they never lose touch with the children, with the students. Okay. It is when you become, when you, when an administrator is taken from outside the school and he comes with those, I'm sorry, with your apologies, he comes with MBA, not that I, I'm not undermining the importance of any degree, it's, education is always important. But you know, somebody who is looking at the school as, a, as something that has to be run like a machine, in other words. See, the heart of the school is human beings, they're the, chil the children, True. all right? So really? a, 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 an administrator who has been a teacher in that sense never ever loses touch with the children okay. all right yeah right. even if i'm not even if i'm not a, there in class if i just take a take a walk or uh, you know if i just cross walk by the classroom i know exactly what's happening because i've been there and i've done that all right, right. whether it's a naughty child or whether it's a hungry child <laughs> who's opened the desk and eating i know i've been there all right i've done that right. okay so that's important i feel and uh, having been a teacher, you will always have and bear in mind how the student felt, what a student needed, how a class reacted. All right. And an administrator who has been a teacher in the past understands the moods, the likes, the dislikes of the children uh, very clearly. All right. And uh, but as I said, if somebody somebody comes from outside and there are several schools who follow that, uh, that becomes a different uh, you know, this thing all together. So, so literally, so yes. the connection, yes. the connection yes. actually establishes when you know yes. exactly the, every nook and corner of your class, yes. and then you go into administration. So you connect more. Huh. Yes, you do connect more. You do connect more. And a good one administrator will never lose touch. Uh, it's like yes. uh, you know, will never lose touch with what the children 
want because that's that is the that is what school is about that is what school life is about isn't it it's about the children it's about the students right. it's not about we are just running it right so uh, we have got one uh, uh, question coming up from mr suman uh, he is asking that uh, madam can you please guide how a junior teacher uh, should develop and boost her administrative skills to climb up the ladder so see the thing is that uh, you have to take you have to whenever the work is given to you whenever something is given to you uh, you have to head long keeping your sometimes keeping your personal uh, interests or your personal problems aside you have to head long uh, take charge whenever something is given to you you have to take charge and you have to ensure that it is done in consonance whatever you are doing is in consonance with the ethos of the school all right so uh, very often i have seen junior teachers they want to they want to do well they but when you give them a responsibility no i have a commitment you know it's my son's birthday my husband's so we whatever you know so that's something that those are the little things that uh, you have to take care of when you are when you're giving an opportunity you must do the best second is i would say that um look i never went through any training i just grew in my job all right if you stay on for many years in the place that you are you can perhaps you can perhaps find a uh, find a find your place as an administrator if you want to be right i was fortunate enough to get so much exposure in cathedral school and wherever i worked that it gave me an opportunity to grow and everything that i learned every question paper that i learned to make remake remade every classroom teaching that i redid every i took everything as a learning i right. i learned on my job all right and mm -hmm. then uh, i was at one point i was ready i took on a lot of responsibility and at one point i felt ready that i was so it was totally my uh, my call all right i could have stayed on as right. a teacher i i but i chose to move on as an administrator because i wanted to so one and you should you, uh, you must know that you have the ability to make that change absolutely have one question coming up sudarshana d is asking hello ma'am uh, can you draw in an insight on the methods or strategies uh, which should an administrator use resolving conflicts between students parent versus teacher so conflict between students uh, depending on what kind of conflicts you have see the i have seen one thing that by and large what has worked with me is a very honest and transparent approach so if between mm -hmm. two children there is a there is a, if they know the truth both parents and children they will listen to, if you are trying to so first and foremost if you are in the wrong if you have made a mistake even as a teacher you say i have made a mistake i have made an error uh, there is no question of conflict i will rectify all right second is if you sit them down nothing works better than that uh um and this i have learned from my mentors you sit them down in front of you and you put one side of the problem pit it against the opposite side of the problem and then very often the resolution comes out by itself yes but the important thing is if you feel something you must immediately bring it to the door let it be inside you and let it fester if you feel that there is some problem you must take it talk about it communicate 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 that's what i keep saying all right so and the minute the children know and the parents know that no matter how uh, you know what kind of demands they are making or what kind of conflicts you have the minute they know that you are being honest they will immediately they will they they will then yes ma'am i agree that this is i made a mistake or we could do it like this they will come up with a solution that's very true right and i think i also uh, like um, in my sessions i always tell that if you have a you know a sabbatic leave or if you have a taken a gap you can just tell it to the recruiter honestly that i got married or i got transferred so Absolutely. i think honesty is the best thing and it really works and it if, really uh, works. here the recruiter Always. possibly understand and Absolutely. at the worst what is going to happen they can discard you but if they Correct. get you caught red handed in a kind of a Uh, a wrong situation that creates a kind of a rule 
we are almost coming to the end of the session so uh, one more question uh, it's from alok alokananda she is telling that ma'am what are some ways you measure a teacher's effectiveness teacher's effectiveness is one very very clear message that i get from the teachers uh, from the children is that are the children attending your class joyfully okay if they are That's doing wonderful. that if they are doing that you have really been a successful and an effective teacher yes yes, yes. i think that is a that is that is the quote of the day like <laughs> we should take it that it is absolutely wonderful so uh, uh, yes whether they are attending joyfully or they are escaping now in last question to you ma'am is that uh, this is a kind of uh, like i would like to ask you that principal as a teacher so could this be a new way to look into the situation like today what we are uh, all the online classes and happening where we are certainly you know losing a kind of a uh, i would say not a kind of a physical touch when uh, things are happening online so you being a principal as a teacher what would you tell your experience being as a principal as well as into administration teacher just a few uh, words so the thing is that yes i my children in fact my children tell me that we want to meet with us we want to discuss we want to talk so for last time for example i i gave them some written assignment we did a test and after that they said ma'am we want to talk to you we don't want to do a class so i lost a class i lost some teaching time uh, for me it is very precious but uh, <laughs> i had to do it i had to do it i have to do so you have to understand see empathy 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 listen listen to what they are saying what they are what they are feeling you know you have to listen uh, to their heartbeat with your ears you know listen to what the children are saying reach out to them you know uh, there is no there is no other i don't think there is any other substitute for this you know so Absolutely. you have to be constantly you have to constantly understand where they are coming from they are so fed up they don't know what's going to happen to them constantly understanding their point of view and yes if you are annoyed about something do tell them that i i didn't like this and they will accept it if you reach out to them they equally they will reach out to you when you uh, mean business so i think um, that is important you know so as a, as a principal i would say that you know never lose uh, never forget uh that classroom that little child that shy child that that frightened child never forget never forget that never forget that wherever you are yes excellent uh, i would say that uh, i got i got emotional after hearing you this has been a session which i have been taking for quite some time just to wrap up uh, uh, the, the teacher sign is the best uh, to, uh, a best teacher would like to bring out the best empathy and honesty what uh, mrs damanti just told us as a head teacher or as a senior teacher when you are moving into administration it is not that you are losing something but rather you know every nook and corner of your classroom and then only you can connect better and the role of an administration is moving out from your individualistic ego and taking a much much more holistic approach and empathy empathy and listening that is what Uh, uh you told us we are really enlightened so uh, 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 uh heartfelt thanks to you ma'am we are listening to domayanti bhattacharya who was a principal and she has taken out a precious time and it was not only listening to you not only learning but really connecting to the, our uh, forgotten or our uh, school days that we really uh, miss now i i must say thank you to you because uh, when i was uh, penning my thoughts down i uh, i sort of uh, was able to put a lot of ideas together that things that were there that i had always felt but i have never penned down and collated sort of so i collected and collated all my thoughts through this thank you so much for having thank me thank you very much we were listening to ramanth bhattacharya uh, speaking on the transition from a school teacher or a teacher to uh, into administration a bigger role this is shonak from asian college of teachers wishing you all have a good day ahead we will be so, uh, soon joining with few more topics engaging you all and wish you all a happy uh, journey ahead stay safe and stay happy bye bye from asian college of teachers wishing you all the best ahead bye thank, you. thank you madam thank, from thank asian you so college of teachers for joining us thank, thank you very you much my pleasure my pleasure